Now, organized labor has suspended its planned strike and protest built to hold yesterday, September 28, following agreements reached with the federal government after a marathon of meeting held between representatives of labor unions and the government. The meeting, which started at about 8.30 p.m. on Sunday and spilled over till Monday morning, had secretary to the government of the federation, Boss Mustafa, Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngige, Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, Minister of State for Labor and Employment, Festus Kayamu, Minister of State for Power, Godwin Jedi Agba, and Group Managing Director of the NNPC. A communique read by the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngige, after the meeting, disclosed that government agreed to suspend the electricity tariff hike for two weeks, pending when a committee set up would examine the justifications for the new policy. He, however, noted that total deregulation in the downstream sector remains, adding that palliatives will be offered to Nigerian workers to cushion the effects of the burden. And Ezekiel Nya Etok, a public affairs analyst, joins us now to take a look at this. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be with you. So we'll just start off by asking, what was, did you expect that suspension? What was your reaction? Uh, are you um, in support or feeling betrayed? Um, the very first thing is that it came as no surprise. The real honest truth is that um, people were not expecting um, any bite from labor. If you go through the social media, it was, we were hoping that um, there would have been a change. And then um, there was this cautious optimism in the air. And um, at the end of the day, I think that um, labor did, um, if, it did what was expected, unfortunately. They did, it did not, they did not surprise Nigerians pleasantly. So um, it was, if you, if you bother to go through the social media, you will see that Nigerians are livid, to say the least. Nigerians are really upset. And um, they are upset that one more time their expectations have been betrayed. So uh, I didn't expect much. But incidentally, um, the day before, I was on one of the major national networks, and I, I asked Labour to find a way to nicely not go on strike. Uh, they just needed a strategy to it, but um, the expectation for me was um, not different from what everybody expected. All right, and also quickly share your take on um, the organized Labour's decision to suspend the strike. Uh, would you say it's in tandem with the uh, civil society groups? No, definitely not. Definitely. And you see, we need to draw two lines because a lot of times we, we mix things up. Labor leadership is not there set up to protect the interests of the masses. No. We must get that really, really, really clear. Labor is set up to protect the interests of its workers. That's what it's, it's set up to do, because I think a lot of times we, we expect things from people that are not um, uh, primed or, or positioned to deliver such um, expectations. Labor is to protect the interest of the workers. So when you say that labor came out empty-handed, you may not be exactly correct. Labor was able to, uh, you know, get some bosses for their workers they were able to get about 10% of the houses that the federal government is backing on for their workers. They were able to get some things for their workers. They were not there to fight for the masses. They were there to use the masses to get what they were voted into office to do. They were voted into office to protect the interests of their workers and not the man on the street. Uh, well, let me right. let me let me let me interject. Society. This same this same um, line of thought was presented yesterday, and the question I asked was: um, These union are supposed to be like an umbrella body for uh, the masses. Yes, we have Nigerian workers, and then we have the trade union congress as well, and some other no, uh, unions. No, so no, no, you you make a mistake. They are not there for the masses. For instance, so if, if they're not there, let me let me ask you something. I, I want to be very sorry? clear. If they're not there for the masses, 
why do they have the um, uh, powers to call for a nationwide strike that is supposed to engender compliance by all? I need you to achieve my purpose. It is incumbent upon you to interrogate who I am. America cannot come into Nigeria and put Nigeria first. It's not possible. Labor was, the leadership of labor was elected by labor to protect the interests of labor. Now for them to achieve that aim, they want to network with the generality of the people. It is now we the people that will call labor first before strike. Each time that labor calls for strike, we sit down and watch labor. We should call labor and say, if we're going to have a partnership, what are the things we are putting on the table? Labor cannot go there to discuss for the generality of Nigerians. No, they use generality of Nigerians to get their own mandate actualized. They meet the people. But each time they go, the people sit down and think that labor is there to work for them. No, no, no. Like I said, if, for instance, I was made the national chairman of, say, the Young Democratic Party, my mandate is to protect the interests of that Young Democratic Party or... PDP or SDP or um, uh, ADC. My interest as the chairman of a party is not to protect Nigerians, it's to protect my party. The same way labor leadership has a prime mandate, not okay. of protecting generality of Nigerians, no. Mr. Mr. It's a civil society that has the mandate to protect the poor, the masses. Great. Civil society. I, I was so just, I was just about to ask you. To can you hold on, sir? Labor oh. can say, okay, we are not going to go to war. That's within them. But when they want to say Nigerians come out, it is for us to say, okay, using the network we have, which is the civil societies, labor, what is our collective bargaining position? Yeah, okay. But, but, get... but when, when we don't have um, labor and civil society groups, working together um, that there's obviously an issue there um, and also some people believe that protest or mass action these days by civil society groups hardly even move the government do you agree now, just to add to that I before you respond, sir, yes. just to add to that, you, you, you alluded earlier that there was anger. People expected the suspension because, um, the, I mean, that's something you expect the unions to do from your analogy. But if, you expect, if they expected that reaction, why the anger? And again, the mass action that people don't believe um, gives much results. I'll tell you this, one of the greatest tragedies of this country is that we have lost the sense of reasoning. We have thrown away completely the most important element of government, governance and society organization, which is cerebral approach to things. You must think through, you must interrogate things. For instance, why are people angry? It's because they were expecting a dog to meow or a cat to back. And one of the biggest problems I have is that people are getting pushed. And the two people that should work together for the masses, which is labor and the organized civil societies. Once the people lose confidence in these two structures, the next logical step is anarchy. And I want our government not to enjoy the fact that they have been able to cage the civil societies and labor so they are like toothless bulldogs and they can have their way. They should know that the worst that can happen to them is if the people have nobody to speak for them and the people decide to speak. We that call ourselves elders must come together today in this country and start to form that interface that can have reasonable conversation with government on positions that concern the masses. That's why I like what the National Consultative Front is doing. And on the 1st of October, they are getting leaders of the North and South to come together to start the process of putting together reasonings that make sense before government. So that we talk first, we jaw jaw first, before we go to that inevitable second step, which must be the last resort, which is protest. Uh, th this is one more time that, you know, a similar incident has uh, 
uh, taking place. Um, Nigerians, you know, prior to the meeting that took place on Sunday night, uh, seemed pretty ready to protest against the increase in electricity and petrol um, uh, tariffs. Uh, but with what happened yesterday, do you think Nigerians can still trust labor again? No, no, they can't. But I, I think that if labor is wise, they have a window of two weeks. That window is for them to call reasonable people to dialogue immediately. And secondly, let us not wait for labor. I call on well-meaning Nigerians not to waste these two weeks because people are not expecting anything from labor. But let there be a pleasant surprise for once. Let's come and sit down with government. I'll give you just a little instance before we leave. I contest I keep bringing these things up because I like giving practical examples. Let me not say I, somebody contested in 2019 and he said, labor in a particular state, let me not be specific. I have data, statistics and everything. Call me, call to other people to make presentations to labor as candidates and then let your governor come finally, based on our presentations, to be able to react to them. And last minute, labor called it off. And the man was so upset. He said, all I'm saying is I want to give you tools for you to be able to interface with your government on all the waste stages so that there'll be money left for you to be able to work. And, you know, if we do it, we don't want the man. Labor is so afraid, scared stiff of government that government knows that like the back of their palm. So, so what options are we left with? They don't. And Mr. I just want to say that. What we options elders, are we, we left leaders, with? should use these two weeks to come in, interface I don't think you can hear me, sir. And help us have a good time. Mr. Yoto, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud. Okay, I I'm trying to ask. You, you, all you've been saying is ne uh, the labor unions are not for the people. What options are we now left with? Because these are issues that need some sort of reaction from the government so that people don't live in continuous um, uh, poverty and hardship. If the unions cannot be trusted, what then do we do? What part do we take? How do we get the government to react to situations in a positive way? Number one, there is a national, the Nigeria Economic Summit Group. They are doing amazing work. Now we also have the Nigeria Political Summit Group. They are also doing an, an amazing work. Then you also have the National Consultative Front. Let these people who are really concerned about things that are going on all come together when they come together to proffer reasonable, workable solutions, Nigeria cannot afford not to, you know, um, to continue with this issue of um, subsidizing petrol. They don't have that money. We need to understand they don't have that money. But we want reasonable to people to come together and proffer solutions and help labor and give them the tools for the next engagement with government. There's too much waste stages in government. Let labor go to government and show practically one, two, three things they can do to save money. Labor, if you touch any of the people in any of the refineries that is not working, labor will go up in arms. Refineries are not working. People are being paid. Money is being wasted. And you need to come with practical solutions to our problems. So the answer for me is... Let these well-meaning Nigerians, let the Otedodas of this world, the Dangotes of this world, you know, the Ibetos of this world, come together in this one-week window and network practical solutions. And then when the dialogue comes, let's restore the confidence of Nigerians by being able to present practical solutions on how we can solve this problem so that government will take decisions that will have social governance as their primary motivation, which is a bottom-to-top approach to government and development with the primary objective of bringing the citizens out of poverty. Nigerians are hurting, and we cannot con continue in this luxury of how many private jets is Mr. President having? Does he really need them? How much are the legislators earning? Do they really need that? We need to cut the spendings so as to have some money to have reasonable palliatives to cushion the effect of the deregulation of the private petro petroleum pump price. Now, in terms of electricity, which we are all talking, you cannot have a viable electricity uh, subsector 
without cost-reflective tariff. To have cost-reflective tariff, it will have effect on the masses. What is the game plan for you to be able to mitigate this effect on the masses? These are things that can be done reasonably. We are doing too much of political governance and not cerebral governance. Let reasonable Nigerians start to speak out, start to come Mr. out Yato. and start to tell government these are the possible things you can do. And going forward, let us interrogate our leadership recruitment processes. There are too many engineers that are in the cockpit. To be an engineer... I kindly hold on, sir. ...the same thing as being a, a, a pilot. To be a politician is not the same thing as being a, 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 a bureaucrat, being vested with the responsibility of running the system. There are too many... Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ayer Talk. Um, it's, it's a conversation that can go on for days. I Indeed, believe. it's actually it can go on for would. days. You know, and I was also going to, you know, ask. Um, you know, it seems like it's a ticking time bomb. <laughs> Bless you. Excuse me. If if we've lost, if Nigerians have lost patience and confidence in labour and in civil society groups, what next um, for Nigerians? Quite unfortunate. We thank you very much thank for you. joining us on the breakfast. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.